Learn audio online with Audio Masterclass. AudioMasterclass.com. What is a pad? What's it used for? In what situations would you use the minus 10 dB or minus 20 dB pad on your microphone or microphone preamplifier? I'm David Meller, Course Director of Audio Masterclass. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to be notified of future videos. And don't forget to like, and any comments, leave them in the comments below, and I'll answer as many as I can. The word pad is derived from passive attenuation device. Passive means it's constructed from electrical components that don't require any power. Attenuation means it makes the signal level smaller. Device, well, we all know what a device is. You'll commonly find a pad in a capacitor microphone or in a microphone preamplifier. There isn't that much use for pads elsewhere in the audio chain, but it is handy to have a pad around if you need it. You can build a pad, or a pad can be bought, built into a female to male XLR adapter, which will be very useful when you want it. You'll need two for stereo. You typically find pads of minus 10 dB or minus 20 dB, but they could be constructed in any amount of attenuation. It's just that those values are the most common and probably the most useful. The great thing about the pad is its passive nature. It can handle any signal level until the circuit components burn out, and that would be a very high level indeed. A capacitor microphone contains an internal amplifier, which is active, not passive. All active devices have an upper limit on the signal level they can handle. And if the signal attempts to go beyond this level, it gets clipped off at the top, which causes distortion, and it sounds bad. So, if a capacitor microphone is exposed to a very high sound level, the signal might clip causing distortion. So what you would do is switch in the pad to bring down the signal level before it hits the amplifier. The pad comes between the capsule and the amplifier in the microphone, so the signal level can be brought down at that point. The same can happen in a microphone preamplifier. If the signal level is too high and the gain is turned all the way down, but you still get distortion, then the distortion is happening in the first stage of the preamplifier before the gain control. The solution, again, is to switch in the pad, which will bring down the signal level before it hits that first stage and it'll prevent the clipping. The question does arise, should you use the pad in the microphone or the pad in the preamplifier? Some microphones can handle extraordinarily high sound levels and they don't need a pad. So if there is distortion, it's happening in the preamp and that's where you should switch the pad in. Other microphones struggle with high levels, such as close to drums, an electric guitar cabinet, or a soprano opera singer. In this case, the pad in the microphone should be the first choice because that's where the distortion's happening. You can't correct it later on. It might happen that you've switched in the pad in the microphone, you've turned down the gain of the preamp all the way, and you're still hearing distortion. In this case, the distortion must be happening in the preamp, so you can switch in that pad as well. It really will be quite unlikely to use the pad in both the microphone and the preamp, but the option is there if you need it. Pads, by the way, can be used for both studio and live recording. I'm David Meller, Course Director of Audio Masterclass. Come and visit us at audiomasterclass.com and learn about our range of online courses where you can gain more knowledge, skills, and experience in audio. Thank you for listening.